Hello, I'd like to take a few moments to go through a set of Ansible playbooks that I've put together to automate lifting and shifting of an application from a typically legacy host such as RHEL 6 onto a more modernized containerized platform. So what I have here is a WordPress demo and we're gonna take this application. It is running on a RHEL 6 system and we're gonna move it over to an atomic host running RHEL 7.3. So we see here, this is the release 6.8 we see the IP address here uh, of 10.19.136.149. Down here we have the, the target atomic host, which is 10.11.169.62. And they're actually in different labs. I'm using Fedora 25 as my host to run the actual playbooks. What I'd like to do is just kind of give you a quick overview and then we'll get right into the run and just make sure that the application migrated over. Okay, so let's start with our inventory host file. So just taking a quick look, we've got two source hosts. So one I mentioned over here, this RHEL 6.8 system running WordPress. There is another one listed here. It is just a freshly installed RHEL 6. It is not running any applications or any services. The reason I'm including it in here is to see how the playbook's introspection role will actually detect or attempt to detect any matching services, packages, files and directories and so forth that are defined in a profiles variable file, which we'll look at next. And in this case, this one here will not match because there are no profiles that uh, would indicate it's running any applications. All right, so then we have the destination host group. Now I do have one commented out, which is a Fedora 25 atomic host. It becomes a little bit more tricky because there are no rail subscriptions available from that atomic host. So then we have to introduce subscription manager. So in this case, I'm just using 10.11.169.62, which is this one in the bottom right terminal, which is a subscribed RHEL atomic host, uh, which will then pass on its uh, subscriptions over to the RHEL 6 system. So next, we're going to take a quick look at the actual profile. So this is a file that defines possible profiles and matched attributes. Because naturally, one of the first questions people come up with when they take a look at this is, well, how can you possibly introspect you know, random systems and determine all applications that they're running? And the answer is we can't do that easily. Uh, that's where something like CloudForms or Manage IQ or some other third-party introspection system may come into play. But in this case, I've got essentially a list uh, in this data structure called profiles of different applications. So the example here I have is WordPress. These are the services I should see running. I don't have any specific files I'm looking for. Uh, the directory would just be the standard uh, HTML directory and I want to see if these packages are installed. Uh, so this is just a very quick POC attempt at this. Um, as you can see, there's a lot that could match this profile as well, other applications. Uh, so the intent is to build this out with additional attributes, possibly even security attributes here, storage possibly, uh, firewall ports, and, and many other things that we can really customize. Um, I'm just trying to present a framework for defining what applications look like and then migrating them. So you see here, there's another sample application. We could then just start appending new profiles, uh, something that matches maybe BRMS or some other JBoss EAP type application and any files and directories that belong to that profile. So that really is it. Uh, other than that, I mean, there are, there are three main roles. Uh, these are executed um, in a logical order. So the first thing we're gonna attempt to do is introspection, which will help us profile the systems. Then we'll do a lift, and the lift here is copying the data and backing everything up, making sure that we have everything defined in that data structure. And then the last role will be shift. So this is where we create the container and shift all of the data that we've copied over into it. So if we just look really quickly at the main playbook that gets called, uh, it reflects that. The first thing we're doing is including that profiles YAML. And so what I'd like to point out here is we could actually def have maybe ISVs or uh, maybe consultants that are using this type of framework with a customer, you would obviously want to go in and define the profiles that match that environment. Uh, and then those will be used throughout the rest of the runs. Okay, so we'll introspect unless we have set this variable false. Maybe instead of doing a dynamic introspection, you could actually explicitly define what profile a particular host should be categorized as. Um, so th that's also supported in here. But uh, in this case, I'm going to be demoing a, a dynamic introspection. Uh, then we'll lift the data, as I mentioned, and then we'll call the next play, which is just the shift itself. So let's go ahead and kick off a run. Then we'll take a little bit more in-depth look at the playbooks themselves. The part that takes the longest here will be the actual uh, pulling of the image and then the building. 
Um, so let's just take a look over here in the bottom right at Docker. We have nothing running. Nothing has been run on here. And there is uh, no images on the system itself. Okay, so I'm gonna kick this off and then we'll come back uh, once the run is into the building phase and take a look as the build is taking place and then as the container is instantiated. Before we kick off the actual run, what I'd like to do is just make a quick post, make sure that the site is working. And we're just gonna inform our users that we have some maintenance about to happen. So we'll just warn our users that there may be something occurring. And the purpose of that is once we get the site lifted and shifted, we wanna make sure that our post and our data have been preserved. Okay, so let's start the run. All right, we can see here that the host I mentioned earlier did not match any profiles, so it will just simply exit. Okay, at this point, it's pulling the image. Uh, next, it will start to build it. And I will fast forward time. All right, if we take a look, we have our rel six image and we have the uh, temporary images being created during the build. And we can see that we're likely doing a yum update of the system, which we'll take a look at the actual Docker file in a little bit. And while this is running, what I'd like to do is uh, just take a look at the actual host itself and we'll see here that we have a couple of directories we have an old uh, run that i was doing but this is the current directory being used if we do an ls in there we can see we have the backup database we have the website directory backed up and tarred and then we have the various files used for the actual build itself if we look at the docker file we could see that this, if you take a look closely, this was taken from the CentOS Docker files, the version specific for WordPress, which was originally created by Scott Collier for Fedora Docker files. And I've tweaked it a little bit since those were originally designed for a Greenfield new setup of WordPress. So I have that tweaked a little bit and I you know, have some of the commands, for example, creating a brand new directory uh, for WordPress instead where you are uh, copying over the previously tarred up directory along with the previous database that was dumped um, and so forth. So uh, these are the commands that will start to run whenever the build is to that phase. Okay, at this point we have different commands being run. So let's go ahead and do a watch on this. All right, so we see over here the playbook has finished building and now it has started the Docker container. So now we should be able to just do a Docker PS and now we see we have a running container. And if we look at Docker images, we have the, the one specific for our build and we can actually take a look now at the Docker logs. Now we're gonna see the actual start .sh, which is gonna install all the proper packages and do all the necessary restore commands. Now while this is running, one thing I'd like to point out is we do have the site up and ready just to show that nothing is running here. Um, so nothing is responding yet. Um, but then we'll go back and look at the logs. We can see that uh, some of the MySQL commands are running we have the passwords being set.
And here we go. So we have HTTPD, MySQLD, and SSHD all running. So we should be able to refresh this. And here we go. So we're now running on the Atomic Host platform, lifted and shifted application. So we can see our latest post is present. So let's make sure that we can still log in and interact with this. So we have the username of demo and password. And there we go. So we have a fully functional restored website running WordPress. And we still have the old instance up in case we need to keep it up for backup reasons, but maybe a future action or optional actions of this shifter set of playbooks might be shutting down the old instance. But for now, everything is up and going. It is working. That concludes this quick overview. What I'm going to do now is deep dive into the playbooks themselves just briefly. So I talked about Shifter itself and how it calls, uh, first of all, includes the profiles. So those could be customized. Uh, then it, it calls introspect, lift, and then shift. So let's take a look at the introspection and, and how that works. So if we list out the tasks, we'll see that we have a main that YAML we'll take a look at. And then we have these sets of attribute YAML playbooks. So, well, not playbooks, but just tasks. So we have DIRs, files, services, and packages. So I mentioned earlier, you may want to add things like ports or uh, security or whatever it may be. Uh, you can simply copy one of these. They are, they are very similar. There's very little differences between these uh, t sets of tasks, uh, except the activities that are, are done to actually verify. So let's take a look at that real quick. So if we look at main, All right, we set a couple of uh, empty lists here because as we go through these and call them, we're going to loop through with items on the actual profiles uh, data structure. And then we're gonna look for services themselves and detect if they're running on whatever source host has been specified. And we do the same thing for packages, files, and so forth. And then when we get to the bottom here, we try to match, uh, after we've collected all this data, we try to see what profiles are matched against all of these known present attributes. And if there are no profiles, we just simply exit for that uh, specific host. So let's take a look at services. The first thing we do is we run a command to figure out if this particular attribute is present. So one of the first things you might be thinking is, why aren't you using the Ansible service module? Well, the reason is Ansible is more declarative and wants to bring something to the defined state. There is no option to just simply retrieve the status. And that's going to be a common theme across uh, what we're trying to do because Ansible is not necessarily designed uh, to do this sort of uh, introspection type of tasks. But we can use a command module to just run service status here, grab that, and then we simply loop through it to determine whether we, in this case, if we see failed against one of the statuses. Now, failed will be returned if it's not running or if it's not present at all. So this is, does a pretty good job of letting us know if the service is started and running. Uh, then we go through and we create a uh, list of matching profiles. So this is gonna loop through this file for every profile and run that against every source defined host. Uh, so in the end, we'll end up with a, a list of matching profiles. So as you imagine, there may be several profiles that match because they may be using the same database and web server type services and have a lot of other similarities. But the hope is that these profiles are unique. Um, that although they may share a lot of these similar attributes, there are going to be overall differences uh, once you compare all of them. And just very quickly, we'll look at files. This is going to be extremely similar, except we're going to do an ls on the file itself rather than um, the service command. And it's going to end the same here with the same type of logic. Okay, so we're not going to go through packages or dirs, but I will look at match real quick. So this is where we go through, and now we are going to set the profile name. And again, we're looping through the different profiles to do this. And that's only going to be the case if we have a match across all of these attributes. And then we have uh, what we hope is a, a pretty good estimate at what the profile is for that particular system. 
So the next thing we're going to do is look at the lift itself. So if we look at tasks, we have, um, you'll notice right away we have the main lift and then we, we start having particular specific, in this case, one of the profiles that we have defined with some supporting services. So let's take a look at that. Uh, we'll start with main. All right, so this is simply going to call the lift YAML only if profile for this particular system has been defined. Now, now if, if you think about it, we really shouldn't get to this point if the profile is not defined because it should have exited and failed. Uh, as we saw here, we do have this uh, 143, 145. It didn't match. So if we were to scroll up and kind of take a look, it never actually hit this, but it's just sort of a you know belt and suspender safety uh, to make sure that we're not calling anything uh, if there is no match. Okay, so now let's take a look at lift. And this is gonna be similarly short at this point because we just have this defined for WordPress as well as this custom sample app, which we may have seen in the profiles data structure earlier. The intention is that you continue adding apps that match your environment and you just create custom YAML files in terms of what activities should be done for lifting that particular application's data up. Okay, so now let's take a look at WordPress. So in this case, we have decided that WordPress is composed of HTTPD and MySQL, and that is enough to lift that application's data out. Uh, certainly any other application, like maybe a JBoss type of app may have a lot more data that needs to be copied, and you can put those into your custom files themselves. So then if we look at HTTPD, uh, we can see here that we are uh, simply tarring up that directory um, and then fetching it over. Now this here should be a variable, and since that's defined in the profiles data structure, that's easy to get. Um, so that's a to-do that I have. And if we look at MySQL, very simple. Now here we are making sure that we have a package installed. So certainly we should probably add a conditional to this. Uh, if the source host should not be touched in any way, then we can probably, instead of using the MySQL DB, we could just use the MySQL dump command uh, with the command module. But uh, for this little POC demo, I, I thought it would it was a little bit more simple to just use the module. But similarly, we're dumping the database and then we're copying it over. So that really sums up Lyft. And you, again, you would just add additional profiles to the tasks directory and call them appropriately. So lastly, we'll look at Shift. So we have, uh, again, custom YAML uh, tasks for the applications. So I've got WordPress and the sample app there. And then we'll take a look at some of these others. Now you'll see there's a with command and a with Docker container. I'll talk a little bit more in detail when I get to these, but this is essentially two different ways to pull the Docker image, build it, and then uh, to run the container. You can do that with the Docker container module, uh, which is a lot easier uh, from, a, from a sort of writing your playbook presentation because you can uh, do it in a more item potent way. With command, you have to build that logic into the playbook. For example, checking if the image is there before you attempt to pull it, uh, checking for the running container and, and so forth. But the advantage to using command is you can do something like a atomic run, which you can't do easily with uh, the Docker container. Okay, so let's take a look at main. Similarly, we're just going to loop through. Now in this case, since the destination host group has the atomic host defined, in order to access the profiles, we have to do it through the host vars method uh, to actually reach the source host uh, variables as we need. Uh, so we're going to include prep YAML, which we'll look at in a minute. Um, and we're just going to loop through as long as profile is defined. And then after the prep, we're going to call shift YAML. All right, let's take a look at exactly that. So prep here, the purpose of it is to just build uh, some preliminary variables that we need. So uh, we're going to extract the OS major version. So in this case, it would be rel six. And we're just doing this because we have some templates that get expanded for things like the Docker file and also for the image tag and so forth. And rather than using this long uh, syntax for expanding those variables, we're just going to set some uh, shorter named facts here. Uh, then we're going to set an OS name to rel as long as that is a matching uh, Ansible distribution. Similarly, we could do that for CentOS or Fedora. Uh, then we're just going to set the container name. So this is extremely customizable. I don't have it in the group vars uh, all at the moment, but this is simply going to be the profile name shifted from and then the source IP or host name. Uh, that can be shortened if needed, but uh, this gives a good indication of what's actually running. And if we look at Docker PS, that's what we have here. So WordPress shifted from and then the source host. Then we create the Docker uh, directory that I mentioned. 
after prep, then we do shift. And this is simply where we detect what the profile is and we call the custom profile YAML. So we have sample app, as I mentioned. Um, once we call that and, and perform any shift specific actions for the application, this is where we call the either the, the command module or the Docker container module. And this is controlled via a variable called Docker use remote. And if it's not set, we'll use command. If it is set, we'll go ahead and use that. Now, the reason I have this split out is there are some requirements for the host itself. So you have to be running Docker Compose and also Docker PY, which is the Python SDK for Docker. Uh, you do have to have the TCP port accessible to the host running Ansible. That is also done in the playbook if you have that conditional set. It does default to using the Docker container, but you can override that. Okay, so let's take a quick look at WordPress. So this is simply going to copy all of the extracted and lifted data onto the atomic host into that directory that we saw. And that just matches the WordPress directory here. And we have the Docker file, which is a template. Um, as along with the other files and the data that we need. The last thing I'll look at is actually instantiating the container. So we have the with command, and I'll just look at that very quickly. So here's where we could do the Docker build and the atomic run in this case. But of course, it has to be a clean environment. Um, there's no logic in here to stop or remove any other similarly named containers, which would need to be done. Although I do like the Docker container module a little bit more. So there's some extra work done here. This is where we configure that remote port, as I mentioned. First, we detect to see if it's configured. Um, and of course, if the variable is set, which we default to false uh, for configuring remote, but we do have it set in a group vars file that I didn't show. And then we set that here. Uh, we use a line in file. Sorry for anybody who does not like that. But we restart the server. So this could be detrimental to any running containers that are not set to auto start. So we'll just have to put that in the readme. And then I've got pull, build, and start the Docker container. Now, these don't have to be broken out. Docker image is used for both of these. You can do this in one task, but I split this out so that I could tag it with a specific name. Um, if not, the uh, here, if you specify tag in the same task that you're trying to pull, it ends up looking for that tag from the, the repository to download. So I do want latest in this case, so I'm not specifying a tag under this task here, but under the build, I do set a tag so that we could tag it. And that's how we get that matching name. Um, then we just start the container. So in an older version of Docker PY, you had to specify the starting command here, but uh, that's no longer necessary. So that's why it's commented out there. And that really is it. That summarizes what's done here. There is a Google doc that talks about the overview of this, uh, as well as an internal repo um, where you can pull down this data. So thanks for watching.